Hi, my name is Gal Lawrence and thanks for tuning into my podcast today. If you're enjoying these conversations and you want to check out more of this transformational work, be sure to come back to guylawrence.com.au and join me as we go further down the rabbit hole. Enjoy the show. Judy, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Guy. Thanks for having me on. It's a, it's a pleasure. I'm, I'm genuinely very excited to have you on and having gotten to know you over the last couple of years as well. And let's kick off the podcast like I always ask everyone. Mm-hmm. If a stranger stops you in the street and asks you what you did for a living, what would you say? Um, well, by day, I'm in information technology. And by night, I run group uh, PT sessions from yeah. home in my yeah. gym. In your gym, which you're sitting in, and I was blown away because <laughs> yes. if anyone's on video right now and sees behind you, I was like, oh my God, you've got all the toys there. Where, yeah, pretty um, much. Yeah, I'm very envious. So that's awesome. Um, well, let's look, I've been thinking about which way to direct this podcast for the listeners as well. And, and I know, uh, especially some of the guys that have been to the retreat and everything will, will know you and coming back in. But there'll be many other people tuning in for this for the first time. And you know, I'm, fa- I'm always fascinated because I remember you, uh, I held a, a Let It In workshop in yes. Fifth Element Wellness. Of course, mm-hmm. we're both good friends of David O'Brien as well, who, right. who hosted me and you've been working with. And uh, he's a beautiful soul. And, and, you know, I'm always forever grateful for David because he got behind me from the start. And it was the very yeah. first place that I ran my workshops in, in right. Fifth Element. And I know yeah. you were, you came in early in one of the first ones mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, and you've been dipping your toe, you've been kind of embracing the work off and on ever since all the way up to coming to the retreat recently. Yeah. So I'm curious, what, what led you to look at this work in the first place? Let's start there. Um, so before I saw Dave, mm. I had been going to, another gym um, saw a PT because I was going to participate in my first body comp. Um, oh, something wow. I would know, yeah, it's something I would never have done. Um, but during that period, from the day that I started to the day I left, I got very sick, um, progressively week on week. Um, and when I left, because I made the decision, well, my body wasn't transforming um, where it should have. So I went, I I stuck it out for 20 weeks. Um, And then after that, not too soon after that, I literally broke. Um, And you can call it a breakdown or you, or, or, or not. I'm, but was it the the body breaking itself kind of from pushing it so hard? do, Do you know what's so funny? I consciously, and that's important to understand, I consciously broke myself. I knew where this was going to go. So before I started at that gym, I did uh, it was about another 20-week exercise prior to that where I was working really hard in my own gym here um, to try and get some results And before I decided I'd go and do a body comp. And um, I was so strict with my food. I did not allow myself any pleasure, wow. no chocolate, and the things I loved the most. Um, my Earl Grey tea, I cut, I cut everything out, and it's so weird reflecting on that because, like I said, I, it was like I was punishing myself, and by punishing, which looked like I was punishing my body, but it wasn't punishing my body. I think what I needed was. Because I, I, I was working in a very stressful job. Um, there's a lot going on at home um, financially. You know, we've got under some pressure. Um, and I think I got to the point of overwhelm that the only way I could put my hand up and surrender asking for help was to get to the lowest of lows. Got you. Um, because when you... when you're at the lowest of lows and you can't go anywhere else. I was at the point where um, I really didn't want to work because the, the fatigue was um, massive and, and my mental lack of mental clarity, which I'm actually still facing now and probably in the last week, my brain is starting to come online and that's, and that's not quite to probably 18, 20 months later. Right. Um, so, you know, with synchronicity in mind, 
um, the reason then I see why I went to that gym, um, although it cost me a lot of money not to get a transformation, was that there was a person there who had seen Dave and he put me on to Dave. Right. And then by seeing Dave and the protocol there and then I saw that you had a workshop and then I thought, oh, I've got no idea what this is about. Um, but most, most right. people don't when they come. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. I'll come and check it out. And from there, I think it was almost the very next day I signed up to the Let It In Academy. Wow. Um, yeah. So, so in 2018, 2019, I pushed my body so hard to the point that I, I broke. Um, and, and what was so difficult during that period was that um, I couldn't give up work. I didn't really think that out when I was pushing myself. Um, so I was basically a walking zombie at, yeah. at work. And I, I worked um, crazy hours, extra. I felt in order for me to be efficient in my work, instead of working an eight hour day, which actually, by the way, I've never worked an eight hour day, but um, I had to put in 10 hours, 12 hours to get the same um, workload out of me because I just couldn't think straight. And, and I didn't tell anyone, you know, for fear of what they mm. would think or whether, whether, cause I'm a contractor, so I don't get paid unless I work. Um, you know, for the days oh, yeah. of work. So I couldn't yeah. afford so to be sick. You felt a huge pressure as well. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. No, but, but, but that was the greatest gift um, for, for me to get to that point because, you know, when, when you're down, the only way is up. Totally. And it, it's mm -hmm. fascinating. Like I've, I've been an, around enough humans now with this work to see that we all have that, those aspects within us. Like we all have... Yeah these parts of us that we don't know how to process or work yeah. through. And, and a lot of it is coming from the unconscious. Mm -hmm. So, and as it's coming from the unconscious, oh, there's my, there's my lamb shanks for tonight, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as it's coming from the, um, the unconscious mind, we just assume that it's part of us. And that's, part of our makeup and then from there um, all things can kind of manifest from that and it depends how far we let them go before the pain gets so great right yes. um, I got a question for you before we go back do people ask you at all about the work the retreat the meditation side of things at all in your circles and if so um, what do you say the, what it is you, you've been doing um, I, I think I've probably kept a lot of it private. Yeah. Um, but the few people, so the, the work, um, um, the people I'm working with now, I've just started a, a new job, literally, I think it was day two after the retreat. Um, and because I've been off, I'd been off work for about three months, which okay. is something I'd never done before. But um, I'm surrounded. It, it's so weird. I, you know, like I said, the synchronicity that, and, and the people that come in your life for a reason. So the people I'm working, I'm working for a management consulting company and the before duty, before the treat, rich, retreat duty would not have put my hand up for that sort of a role. Hmm. Um, I just had someone that I worked with before just give me a call that a, a job was going there. And because the expectation for me was, oh, gee, you really got to get your shit together when you're working for a company like that. Um, because the onus is of you, you're accountable. Um, you, it's a sort of role where you just hit the ground running no matter where it takes you and, and you're self-sufficient. And over the last couple of years, that hasn't been where I've sat. Um, because I haven't been well and of, you know, mm -hmm. full state of mind that I was before. I thought, oh, but I just went through the process. There were three interviews and I went through them all. And then um, to start there and the people, uh, they're my people. But, and, and I was just having the conversation with um, the, the person I report to. She is the most amazing, caring person and the funny thing is I have always struggled to work for women. I, I'm not quite sure what it is, but 
she's the first person that I've um, reported to as a, as a woman, um, that she is that nurturing, caring, supportive type person. And we've got a wonderful dialogue. Um, Amazing. And, yeah, it, and, and she even said today, you know, that our communication, the way we communicate with each other um, is fantastic. She doesn't need to worry about anything I'm doing. She doesn't need to second guess anything I'm doing. So all of that worry, you know, in the past that I've avoided working for women, um, it's just dissipated. And, um, and so we've had wonderful ch chats about the retreat and, and, and she's going through very similar, it, it, there's very similar aspects of her story that are mine and mine of hers. Um, so, you know, so it really opens me up from that yeah. state of awareness that you, you get what you get and there's a, there's a, you know, there's a reason for it. You don't quite necessarily understand it, but it's just all part of the life journey. Yeah, absolutely. And I've found, you know, especially for myself, that's in the, this environment a lot. The more we shift and the more we surrender into that shift, the more the things shift around us. Yes. Yeah. But it opens up in beautiful ways, just like you said, and you just see mm -hmm. things through a different lens and, and where there might have been obstacles because you've been thinking a certain way based upon our past experiences into that moment. Yeah. Yeah. We're like, oh, my God. And then you open up and, and then these things start to flow and, and it gives us, I don't know, it, it, for me, it's, it gives me such a sense of, I, I don't know, wholeness and well-being in those moments and as opposed to constantly striving to get somewhere or something to relieve the yeah. way I'm feeling now. And that's a huge, mm -hmm. subtle but huge shift uh, yeah. along the way, you know? Yeah, yeah absolutely. With, with the, the, the things that are going on, we'll get to maybe touch on some things at the retreat, but what, what um, looking now with what you've kind of been through and some of the... the because you, uh, let's be honest, you do the work, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, none of this falls on anyone's laps. It's not, not, there's no more. But, but having said that, I have struggled to get beyond week one of the Let It In Academy. And that's because from, I think it's from week two, yeah. it's all, you're looking at what, what do you want? What do you want out of life? And I'm really struggled with that because there isn't anything that has, come to me previously and I think that's because I had so much I needed to deal with myself first yeah first before I could even contemplate of where I'm going to next or what I want so it was at the retreat or after the retreat that that's starting to bubble up to the surface 100 percent. yeah and for just to just for the listeners to paint a picture as well for me when i designed the four-week program it's literally to bring people into this world to bring awareness to what's possible mm -hmm. and start to look at those things you know yeah. if we could sell solve our life's problems and things in four weeks jesus i mean i'd be in a mansion <laughs> somewhere uh you know <laughs> but exactly but, you know, so 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 in that it's brilliant, you know. And but when I say doing the work, you've you've been doing the meditations, you've been mm -hmm. you've got you've got a self inquiry, and it's from that self inquiry the answers are coming from yourself. Absolutely, well, we we hold the space and provide the tools that you have to go and apply. It's just like you holding that gym space for everyone else, right? You can yeah. get them in the room, you can show them how it's done, yeah. you can motivate them, but they still have to do the blood, sweat, and tears and the, and the yeah. ten push-ups at the end of it to get exactly. their own result. You know, That's and, right. and yeah, yeah, absolutely. So with the with the wisdom of the shifts that you've been feeling and you're transforming, if you look back upon your life now. What lessons have you learned, I guess, from things along the way to, to gain the wisdom, like you said, like I've even heard you say that, that that's been a blessing for me now, mm -hmm. being able to look mm -hmm. back. So um, I've learned that my body is my compass. So from a young age of 10, almost 40 years ago, um, through to now, my body has given me clear signs of either unwellness 
of mm -hmm. body or spirit or, or mind or emotion. Um, and I always, so I've been, when I say sick, I've been, I've had stomach issues, digestive issues, pain in the gut, pain in the solar plexus, um, fatigue, pain in the joints, pain in the muscles um, for most of my life on and off. Oh. And, and so I don't know what normal feels like. It might be for an hour, it might be for a day, it might be two days. Um, and, and then it's not, which, but what's ironic about that, that is the only thing I get. I've never had mumps or measles or chicken pox, um, or the, the flu or the cold or, um, or any, any of that. Uh, the only thing I've had is this feeling in the pit of my stomach where I feel nauseous or I feel sick that, you know, that I could be sick, um, and that originated from the age, I'm not quite sure exactly, it's somewhere between the age of 10 and 12 when we, we lived on 150 acres on a farm that was the most blissful experience from an environment perspective. Um, Sounds amazing. Being, uh, it, it, it is. And we actually had a look at, Jason and I had a look at a property on the weekend and, and the gentleman um, said to me, he, he's nearing 80 and he was just hearing me speak and he goes, um, oh, you're coming home. And I go, how, you know, how insightful. Absolutely, I, I want to go back to not where from where I came but from that environment of, of have, being immersed in nature um, to live simply, uh, to declutter. You know, I, I sort of think if you declutter your environment, um, you sort of, declutter well for me it's decluttering your mind 100 um, percent. yeah it's the best place to start if you can't figure out the mind declutter the house <laughs> yeah so for me growing yeah. up being the eldest of five i was a very responsible eldest child um i never rocked the boat with my parents never questioned things um i was you know i abided by all the rules um and so my next sister down, well, she couldn't compete with that. So she was a bit of a terror, a trailblazer. Um, and I was the apple of my dad's eye. I was, um, so my, my dad's, a, a, well, not now, but was a, a hunter. You know, he'd go and hunt um, on properties nearby uh, or all around um, clearing them of whether it was any vermin, whether it was rabbits or um, foxes and, okay. and, and things like that. Um, so he didn't make a great living. Um, he had dabbled here and there trying to hold down a, a normal job, but that didn't go so well. Um, so, yeah, I was the apple of my dad's eye and, and he did something um, between that age of 10 and 12 that rocked my world off, off its axis. Um, so he had an affair and, and, um, there was a, you know, a child out of that. And I think what that in itself wasn't, you know, so inexcusable for me, it was, we're heading into town one day and, uh, we're in the car and I just had this feeling and I just said, it's not over, is it? Um, cause he said it was all over and I go, it's not over, is it? And he just looked at me, he goes, no. And for him to lie to me, um, yeah. And, and not soon after that, I, um, the one and only time I've ever got sick, um, uh, I had pleurisy, um, for, for a couple of weeks and I got quite ill and, and mm -hmm. with pleurisy that's around the, the, the lungs and, you know, I guess it was like, you know, I couldn't breathe. Inflammation, um, isn't it? Yeah, and then after that, that's when all the, the stomach issues started and um, uh, I went and saw lots of doctors and physicians and uh, specialists and stuff and no one had an answer. Well, that, there were lots of labels, but no one had an answer. And all through my life, through my 20s, through my 30s, through my 40s, um, you know, I've just been searching and, and what I really pride myself on and I'm so proud of myself is that um, 
I just didn't accept what I was being told. I was always, and I, I, I knew that I had to fix me. So I was really looking for people to give me information to determine whether it sat right with me um, and, and, you know, that I could heal myself. And the, and the strange thing is even seeing Dave and, and I went on to the first protocol um, and, um, and that didn't work. You know, I'm not healed. I wasn't healed, though. That wasn't healed. And I just said to him afterwards, I go, but it won't, Dave. And he goes, well, why not? And I go, because it's a symptom. They're all symptoms. They're not the issue. The issue is inside of me how I think and how I'm still living in that, you know, that little girl in the, the, the past and how mm. I'm, frozen, I'm basically frozen in time. And I don't know how to get out of that state how to break um, that loop yeah yeah and it's the same i'm on you know i'm on another protocol and it's not working how it should because it won't i'm telling because i've told myself it won't work because i haven't uncovered the crux of it do you know like it's it's I, I, and i had some massive shifts at the retreat but they're still layers but I, the layers never end no they never end <laughs> like get used to it and 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 i say that with love because it's the same for all of us you know yeah. even myself matt petra that are facilitating there's always more hmm. there's always more learnings there's yeah. always more wisdom to gain there's always more um um expansion of awareness or consciousness hmm. constantly but if it wasn't for the the way i look at it now if it wasn't for the discomforts it wouldn't drive us to truly look at the mm -hmm. things that we need to look at. Absolutely. And, and for me, that yeah. is, it is, I see it so different, you know, from a different perspective of different mm. lens, all of these, um, you know, discomforts and, and, and um, pains and stuff that I've had is my, I'm so thankful I've got that because if I didn't have it, who knows what, labeled disease i would have um but i just feel that someone's looking out for me um because of the fact that i'm searching and trialing things it's like mm, okay we'll give her a bit longer um you know before anything decides to take hold because i know i'm at a you know i'm i'm sort of at the the, the cliff face um if people felt i would imagine if a number of people felt like I feel day on day. Um, and, you know, I've had all these blood tests and I'm immunosuppressed and I've got HBA dysfunction and all these other labels of, of things, you know, um, intestinal permeability, dysbiosis, mm. you know, lot, lots of different stuff, right? And so people will say, oh, yeah, you, well, you just do the protocol and you'll fix it. And it's like, well, you sort of got to under, find the underlying, underlying cause you know, to it all. So I, and, and it was the thing that came first to me at the retreat that I changed. So on the, the first, was it the first night? Yeah, that was the first night when we did an exercise and um, about what we should embody. Mm. And my very first instinct was the words to be held. And, and when I saw someone else go up and, and, he said, oh, no, you know, it's all about me, like me, but about him. I thought, oh, no, that's right. That, that makes better sense to me. All right, I'll change it. But it wasn't. My first instinct was bang on. Um, and, and by you guys, the three of you holding space for us, um, and now coming home and so thankful that Jason decided to come with me mm. because he... he we can have, he, he, he's much more insightful. He can see where I'm just a little bit off and I'm, maybe I'm not telling him, but he can, you know, he's, he um, can see it and, and ask and probe, you okay? You know, what's going on there? Um, which he would never have seen before. For sure. Yeah. 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 Amazing. It, it, it's a, yeah, it's an interesting thing. I remember many years ago uh, when I was learning 
uh, I was being coached with this work to be able to mm -hmm. coach it as well. And he, and, and he said, Guy, it's a very difficult thing sometimes to see that quite often a lot of us, a lot of our acting out as an adult are coming from stories of a child. We just don't yeah. see it mm -hmm. and we don't know it. And that's the body. And I, I truly believe now that the body has eternal wisdom, but we've yeah. got a head that gets in the way. <laughs> Mm -hmm. absolutely and a conscious mind that absolutely. you know overthinks that's actually mm -hmm. restricting the wisdom of the body to do its thing and what i love about the retreat and these processes is allowing us to get out of our way to really let that body begin to show you and allow yes. that wisdom to occur you know yeah and and yeah, from absolutely. that we get the insights and the lessons and the aha moments and the holy fucking shit kind of thing and and from that place we can then occur change because then we can see something from a different level of mind yes it's the mind that created it and then if we can see that that's where true empowerment lies lies i believe yeah because yeah. then we can make conscious choices from a different place coming from that's a different right. place and they generally come more from love than fear over time and we learn to start to live more from that place Mm -hmm. And that's where we start to want for less and embrace the day and yeah. appreciate the gifts that we have, right? And yeah, that's right. It's amazing. Yeah. It's beautiful. And, you know, to see some of the, trans, you know, obviously I, I never share too much about the retreat on the podcast. Mm -hmm. We always say it's in the unknown and we like people to step in. But it, like mm -hmm. my mom did it, so she was all right. She's 75. Exactly. She survived. <laughs> Bless her, you know. Um, but... Um, you know, if you could encapsulate, I guess, what you left coming from the retreat, because obviously you had some shifts in there. That was mm -hmm. wonderful to see. And now coming back and integrating it, what have been, how, how would you summarize that and maybe the lessons you took from that? Um, I think the greatest for me is to be able to be present. So mm. I've either been... Most of my life, when I reflect back, I've either been reliving the past or running to the future and not really live day by day. Um, so my, our, our kids, for example, I, I look back now and I look at the time that I've actually been present um, with their upbringing and... I haven't so much. I mean, it's just, you know, 19 years have gone by with my daughter and I sort of think of when I was, when she was younger, what we used to do and, and, and um, being explorers and, and going for drives and, and um, you know, just, yeah, experiencing different things. And for the last 10, 15 years, I've just been in a state where I've not quite been a hermit, but um, more at home, haven't really reached out to family and friends and done things. And as a byproduct, haven't really been present um, within the family. So I've basically just been working, come home, go to sleep, wake up, work, come home, go to sleep, just have not been present. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've held, um, you know, quite a bit of guilt around that. And, and I'm really thankful for the retreat that coming back, I'm just more present. And, and what's really special about that as well is that even with your kids, even if you haven't really been there for 5, 10, 20, 30, 50, whatever years, um, they don't necessarily just, you know, cut you off. Like there's, there's the possibility to get it back. It might be later in life than what you would have liked, but already there's flow, there's engagement, there's communication um, back in our family environment. You know, it hasn't been there for a long, long time. Um, mm. and, and I went out to lunch with my daughter the other day and I just told her a little bit about the retreat and certainly the last day when I had a massive out of, <laughs> I don't know, I can't explain it, just out of body experience. Um, 
where I had the most guttural release. And, um, and what came to me at the end of that was my daughter. And, um, and I'm so thankful for that because of the guilt I had inside. So when I had her, um, when she was born and, and next to me in the crib and it would be in my um, arms in the bed and all that sort of stuff and swaddling her and I just didn't have the connection with her. I didn't know, I know now because it was different with my son, but I had undiagnosed postnatal depression and no one picked it up. And right. me and me being the, you know, responsible one that I've got all my shit together and blah, I didn't reach, I didn't say anything that oh, something's not really, it's a bit off here. I'm not feeling like I, you know, have this connection with her or that I really want to hold her or bath her. I freaked out when I had to bath her the first time. Um, and so at the retreat, that release was sort of releasing maybe not all, but a good part of that guilt I had. And, and so when I went out to lunch with her the other day, I hadn't said anything to her until uh, we, ha- we were having a really lovely conversation. How old is she? And, uh, 19. Oh, wow. And, and I told her about that. And I just said to her, I'm so sorry, you know, that I effed up your life. And she just looked at me and she go, what? No, you, no, you didn't. And, so that's the thing, right? If, if how silly of parents not to mm. have, you know, when you think these little have these little stories in your head and stuff, and you don't validate it. You've already well, you've self validated it in your mind, but you haven't really validated it with the person. And so, what I held on to guilt for nineteen years for nothing—that is senseless. But, but yeah, so if all, anyone again, we all you know, do it. To, we we've all we're all guilty of doing these things. Yeah, it's right? just um, communication is yes. so important. You know, Jason and I have struggled with that the last couple of years, and and now I mean, God, we've communicated more in the last two weeks than what we probably have the last ten years <laughs> about real meaningful yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. that makes a difference to our lives. Like we we just we just make up all of this um, stuff and and. Um, and it becomes our narrative and it's really, I, I catch myself now um, that I listen to the words that I speak mm. um, and there's so often now I catch myself and I change the words. It goes, oh, hang on, no, that's what I've always said, but that's not true now. But do you know what I mean? It's sort of totally. rewriting. That, rewriting. You're rewriting that. the program. That's yeah. That's, that's the good. That's the game right there. Like yeah. it's being consciously aware. Like you said, when you come from the retreat, you're more present. You're more conscious. Mm. You don't mm-hmm. buy into the narrative that we've conditioned the body because of our past experiences. And because yeah. you've had some releases and experiences, you're now able to interrupt those patterns before a seed becomes, you know, this yeah. huge tree. Yeah. You know, and, and there's no catch-all. I mean, going, you know, going to the retreat. Oh God, no! Um, it is 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 the start, and and just the I, I I call it the three A's. I've been pondering this, you know, for so awareness is absolutely key, just to be aware mm-hmm. of how you think and or and your bodies, you know, giving you signs and and stuff. Um, and then at the end of the day, you need to have acceptance. You need to. Boom. You know, it's yeah. just, Bingo. it's okay. You can't rewrite, you can't rewrite the past, but from this day forward, you just accept without um, taking over your life where things are. And, and, and um, you know, if I don't want to do gym today and, and, and um, a workout or, or um, eat, you know, really clean because stuff's coming up or whatever. Yeah. So, so what? I mean, yeah, there's got to be some joy in your life, doesn't there? And Absolutely. then the other the other point is, um, at the end of the day, we've got to take action. So, 100%. you know, I'm I'm certainly um, one of these people. Over the last couple of years, with this searching, this searching, I've bought. Oh, I've spent so much money. I've bought um, <laughs> other programs, online programs. I've bought um, books and all this sort of stuff that I haven't got into 
um, that I haven't, you know, taken action from. And it's just, well, it's just information then, isn't it? Um, if, if you don't, if you totally. don't use it. I've yeah. always said, I know a lot of great philosophers, like I certainly don't t- know, know everything. I, I mm. don't know anyone that does. No. And, and sometimes I feel I find myself clawing for information, especially when there's a feeling inside of uncertainty yeah. and it almost then is my, my unconscious trying to cling on to something safe. And I yeah. start to recognize mm. that. And, and we can deny ourselves from taking action by giving yeah. us one more book, giving us by one more program, yeah. by give, you know what I mean? Where mm-hmm. one thing when we created the retreat is like, we really want this to be about the action yeah. and, and taking right. the action, you know, and obviously creating the awareness, creating the acceptance, but also taking mm-hmm. the action to, for them to support each other. Um, exactly. la- last question for you. Mm-hmm. With this information that you've this wisdom that you've been learning and and, and layering and now like where you're pivoting in life and mm-hmm. what would you like to see for yourself like what do you think what platforms is this going to give you for the next 50 years of your life like when you look back upon it all um do you know i actually i don't have an answer right now because mm-hmm. things are still i'm finding day by day things are unraveling and what I'm just doing at the moment is I'm not having any preconceived ideas of what it is I think I should be called to do or where I not, think not so I, much, but I'm just... A, yeah, not so much being called what to do or thing, but what, what do you hope in, from, a, from a feeling perspective that we've still got life and life is ahead uh, I'll give you my example. For me, yeah, you know, like... No, I, I, no well, for me, it's actually just to live. <laughs> I haven't... I'm 50 this year and I haven't lived. I haven't, I haven't allowed myself joy. Hmm. Um, and just the simple things. And, and that's why it was so funny, you know, that last day when we picked up a card off the floor and, and what you know, something that would resonate with us. And and for me, it was exactly what I needed. And it was that, you know, I do what brings me joy. Um, And so after that, we've, Jason and I, we've been chasing waterfalls and and getting back into nature. And um, and, and for me, and and just the simple thing is for me to have sun on my skin is so rejuvenating, just as simple, it costs nothing. Um, And to read a, 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 fictional book or something you know it it doesn't have to be massive it doesn't have to cost money it's just what can i find in my day that you know that i'm grateful for and for me it's not actually writing a gratitude journal it's just in the moment you know you know how do i feel and i'm trying to um help my kids with that as well um yeah so i I just want to be present and just um, not expect that that joy comes from external rewards either. It's mm. from within just the simplicity. So simplicity and kindness is really what I'm looking Beautiful. for. Yeah. Jo- joy is all around us if we choose to look for it. Absolutely. I think of the, the you were on the retreat with the swimming pool where we all jumped in yeah. Yeah. fully closed in fantastic. the rain. Yeah, it's a moment wonderful. that will live with me forever, you know, exactly. and it brought out our inner child. It was, you know, it hadn't rained in how mm-hmm. long the fires would come out of that process. Yeah. And it was the, one of the simplest things we could do. And I've never seen so much laughter and happiness in yeah, one moment. It was you know? amazing. Um, with, with everything we've covered today and for people, you know, from all walks of life, we'll be listening to this. Um, mm-hmm. What would you like them to leave for, uh, to ponder on? That, no matter what's happened in your life or where you are right now, um, there's always a chance to get back on track and you have all within you already to make that happen. You don't, yeah, it's just, um, it's just trusting and it's, it's listening to your, to the, there's signs everywhere. It's crazy where I see them now. Um, um, the, you know, the, the world, the universe, whatever you want to call it, the spirit, 
um, is guiding you and you've just got to become more aware to, to hear it, to feel it. Awareness. Yeah. Judy, thank you so much for coming on and sharing today. I, um, I really felt like I wanted to reach out and ask you to come on. <laughs> and you, thank you, you, for you, that. you openly said yes. And, um, mm. and I promise you what you shared today was incredible. And so many people would be inspired by your own story. And uh, I have no doubt it will help others in their journey too. So thank, thank you kindly. You. Thank you very much. Thank you, oh, It's been wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.